wakan diri desa di jagat jese Good evening, good evening, good people. Good evening, good evening. Trying to set the camera and Good evening, good evening. Please show some love. Um, we are live. Please be sure to go and call your friends. Tell them that we are live. Today we have Varaizo on the show and basically we're going to be looking at her journey and story and see how resilience and hard work has played a pivotal role in her life and what she has achieved thus far in her diverse career please share please share share to groups Share with your friends if you've got friends that should be here again. Type in their name in the comment section and, and Facebook will be sure to just to notify them. Say hi, interact with us. We want to see who you are. Where are you watching from? Tell us, say hi and just comment. Where are you watching from? I am interested to know. I'm interested to know where you're watching from. Say hi. Good evening, good people. Good evening. Mr. Mashate from Leonard Mukosi. Uh, good afternoon to you in the United States of America. I hope you're well. Thank you for joining us, sir. Really appreciate your support. Great, good people. Great, great. Let me just start off by just clearing a little bit of things. Um, so the competition that is running, I'm seeing that a lot of people are a little bit confused on what should be done. The right way, I think where we're getting confused is with the shares. So the right way is not to share it onto your timeline many times. The right way is to share it on your timeline after you've tagged five people who come and like the page. When you share it on your timeline, people, your friends will share it. So we will look at how many friends have shared. So your, the, the amount of shares, the amount of likes, and the amount of comments. And basically, that's how we're going to be deciding who, who wins. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to um, you know, leave a message in the DM. We will further clarify. Allow me to just take this opportunity to thank... Um, Biz Legal, they are the company that is responsible for doing all our branding. They did our logo. They um, are, are currently busy with trying to get a jingle together for us. And week in, week out, they're the company that is responsible for making our posters. If you have um, a business or you'd like to consult, you know, issues that relate to business, legal issues that relate to business, they're the people to go them go to. Please look the look up their details on our page and you know get in touch with them. They're the best. We would also like to thank uh, the people that have partnered with us. Some of them are not yet ready to uh, for us to say their names in in relation to the competition. People that have you know uh, contributed some of the some of the award uh, award award prize uh we really appreciate all your support and really 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 i am personally humbled young aspirations is going far but it is possible obviously with your support 
Today we have Varaizo on 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 the show. Varaizo Nyakunika Wanandi Mai. She is a qualified practicing lawyer with an LLB from Rhodes University. She is also a fashion designer with a design house and a clothing line named VD by Varaizo. She is also she has also left a mark in the Zimbabwean music industry with several Zimbabwean Music Awards nominations and hits including Ruwarango, the song that we were playing, which is a rendition of the classic hit by Pied Pipers uh, with the same title. And Noita Manyemwe, which was a collaboration, look at technology trying to, to play games with us. Um, but which was a collaboration with uh, the legendary Leonard Mafumo. Um, the young serial entrepreneur uh, does not show any signs of slowing down as she continues to grow her empire and still has a lot of uh, on her agenda, including making it on the Forbes 30 under 30 list. Varaizo, thank you for being with us today. I really appreciate you saying yes to um, the request. I'm just trying to bring you onto the stream. Welcome, my friend, and thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much for having me, and thank you so much for the kind words, all those wonderful things that you just said about me, the bio. Thank you very much. <laughs> yes, we are inspired, and if I should say, you are the First lady on the show after many requests to say, we see the guys, but where are the lazy ladies at? And in Women's Month, this is really exciting. Thank you really for saying yes to, to our request. Thank you. I'm honored to be here. I'm very much thrilled. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so people that we have, Tato, uh, Valesa, hi, Freddie, and congratulations on this great initiative. I'm watching. From Gauteng province, I'm not going to try and pronounce that, but I think it's Midrand or something like that. Uh, Ronald Chipazo, my brother, I see you. Thank you for joining. Please tell us who you are and where you're watching from. We are really interested uh, in knowing where people are watching from. Right. Well, I, so to kickstart our, our session, what we're going to do is play a game. So the game, what it does, it helps us understand you a little bit better. I mean, get to know you a little bit better. But also, as 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 you answer us, it's a question of how well does Varaizo know herself, eh? So um, what it is, is you've got five seconds literally to give us an answer. And, uh, <laughs> and what we're going to do is we will allow you to explain why. I, I think let's allow you to explain why. Uh, the reason why I say that because we can learn a few things um, from the process. So are you ready for us to start? I am absolutely ready, yes. <laughs> Great. So the first, either or, Netflix or YouTube? YouTube, definitely. Why? Because um, I'm not a TV person and I don't really watch movies or anything, anything like that. I feel like YouTube is more flexible. There's so many things that happen on YouTube that you won't be able to find on your own find on Netflix. So I like to watch um, uh, tutorials, beauty and makeup. I like to watch real life stories, real people um, creating their content. Um, I'm also a YouTuber. So I yep. like to my fellow YouTubers. And um, I just think this is more variety of, of, of content to watch on, on YouTube as opposed to Netflix. I feel like Netflix is limited. There's just movies and, you know, maybe documentaries here and there. But YouTube is, is, is where the heart is, is where my heart is. So many channels with so many people bringing in different things on YouTube, mm. from gossip, celebrity gossip, to yeah. <laughs> um, tutorials, to learn masterclasses about business. I like to watch Busite Mikwayo. He's very brilliant. He's got a wonderful channel there. And oh, wow. he talks about yeah. business. There's just so much that, that YouTube has to offer. Um, so definitely YouTube. <laughs> so YouTube, those that are listening, it's YouTube because there is a great opportunity to learn there. Look, uh, movies don't take you anywhere. What you're doing when you're watching movies is actually giving the people that made the movie money and you're not really learning as, as much. Actually, um, let me leave it there for now. I can, I can go on. But anyway, phone call at, or text. I'm definitely a texting person. I prefer to text because I feel like I can express myself more when I'm texting and I get more time to think. 
yeah. some text, and I can re- I can I can delete things that are uh, wrong and offensive things if I'm angry. Yeah. So definitely, I'm a text person. Don't call me. Text me. <laughs> and it's cheaper to text as well. I like to save coin. <laughs> You like you like to, 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 to save coin. Tanaka Mparuta, we see you. Thank you for joining us. Varaizo egg or avo? Definitely eggs. Because you can have different forms of eggs. You can have boiled eggs, you can have scrambled eggs, yeah. you can have an omelette, you can have a variety of, of eggs as a well, avocado is not I mean you can play around with it here and there, but it's it's still avocado. So at least I can I can have five different eggs for seven days of the week and not get bored. So definitely mm. eggs. <laughs> Here's another one. Music or podcast? Definitely music. I mean, I'm a musician. So of, of course I love music. <laughs> so I don't need to play further. Music by far. <laughs> it's an interesting one. Uh, yeah. Save or spend? I, I think you know, um, as a fashion designer, that I thought that would be an interesting one because, um, yeah, let's hear what you have to say. You know, it's a mixture of both, but definitely save. Mm. I like to. Uh, it really is a difficult one, but I like to save. But when I do spend, I make sure that I'm spending on something that's good quality, something that's that will last me long, and something that I can hold on to for for a long time. So, but I'm definitely a, a saving person. Also, I learned a lot from my husband. He, he likes to save a lot. So, yeah, I like to save, definitely. And uh, I was going to just say congratulations on live. I know we spoke about it a little bit just before on the newly born baby boy. Um, <laughs> that should be an exciting journey. Congratulations. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Um, Okay, so I've, I also was watching one of your um, YouTube videos where you were actually saying that you you sometimes you you buy expensive and you know uh, brands and and that's because if you're using them more regularly and they 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 don't uh, uh, they they they're not easy to I, I think you were speaking about your pumps I think and uh, yeah. I think it goes back to what I was saying. I'd rather, when I spend a lot, I'm spending on spending my money on quality, good quality things, things that are durable, things that will last longer, and things that will make an impact in my life. So, for example, yeah. to give the example of the pumps, the, the pumps that I was talking about in that video, um, I was just basically saying that I, when I go to work, for example, I'm also a lawyer. When I go to work, I want to have a good pair of of black shoes, a good pair of white shoes that I can. I can wear, they look good, but they're also very durable. And yeah, but then I like, to, you know, the thing about fashion is about mixing high end and low mm. end. So for example, I could be wearing a Mr. Price t-shirt and well, not Mr. Price, but a Mr. Price shirt or a Mr. Price top and a pair of Zara jeans and a very good pair of, of uh, and a pair of Louboutin shoes, for example. Mm. Uh, it's just a mixture of everything. It doesn't really have to be, just, I mean, if you can afford designer wear from head to toe, that's wonderful. But I like to save like i said and i only buy designer when it's necessary and i like to buy things mm. that last me long so see it is a bit this, we need to balance the two saving and spending i, I'm I hear you <laughs> yeah i hear you the last one time or money you know it depends but definitely time i'm not really i'm not i'm not materialistic i'm not really a money person I'm thinking about it in, 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 in the context of relationships, for example. I think I'd rather have somebody that I spend more time with. I, would, I think I'd rather build my relationship based on time and being together and spending quality time together as opposed to... I mean, I like gifts here and there, of course, but, you know, I, I think I would rather have time. Time is more important to me because um, good relationships, good, stable, and um, uh, strong relationships are built from, from time. Yeah, very, very important. Time. It's definitely time for me. Great. Mfunzeni, we see you. Thank you for joining us. Please tell us who you are. And if you have questions, please don't um, hesitate to ask those questions. Uh, if you have any particular questions, interact with, uh, with us, engage with us. We, we want to hear from you. But moving into a segment that I really now call Get to Know, Varaizo. 
you know, I think yours is a story of uh, resilience. It's a story of hard work beyond obstacles. If you are asked to paint a picture of, of, of Varaizo and some of the highlights that life has thrown you away, what would this picture look like? Well, it's going to be a very crazy picture. It's going to be a lot because I've only been on Earth for about for 27 years and a lot has happened during that period. So starting off from when I was young, I wanted to be a model. And so I started doing modeling pageants and I did Miss Zimbabwe Junior, Miss Harare Junior. And I know it's strange. So a lot of things have happened. <laughs> Yeah. A lot, you know. Um, I I was there. I even was in the top three. I think I was first princess or something for Miss Zimbabwe Junior, and then second princess or first princess in the Miss Harare Junior. Those were very big pageants back then. I did fashion shows. I did the first ever Zim um, Fashion Week with Priscilla. I forgot her surname. Big models, and um, so I had a modeling career, and I was young. You know, I was early teenager and you know all that but then I also wanted to be a musician and being music mm. was all that was flowing in my blood always and so um I always wanted to be a musician and from a young stage I also started singing and then I decided to take it to, to make it professional um and then so that became something that I think I still went on until I was about uh, three four-ish three four-ish yeah and then fashion it was also something that I always had a passion for. I was always doing mm. I was uh, I always liked being feminine and I, I think being, I was being such a girly girl, I, I thought that I always enjoyed, you know, dressing up, putting on makeup, mixing clothing items together and coming up with different ensembles. So it was always it was always something that was I was very passionate about. Um mm. see, so I I decided to turn that into a business because I I always had an issue with, not an issue, but people always used to ask me why I used to get my clothes and how I put things together. And I realized that, you know, maybe I should make this into something that, um, that can, I can monetize off this and um, mm. share my, my passion, my, my passion for fashion with people and make it a business. And this is where, that's how BT was, was, was born, um, BT by Light. Mm. Um, I used the money that I got from my parents when I was, when I graduated in, my first graduation in 2016, I used the money that they gave me as a gift um, to start up my business, my music, my, my fashion business. So I was, I've been growing it and grooming it since 2016, and this is where we are. So basically, all this background is just to tell you that, you know, it's been a ride, it's been a, a, a roller coaster, but um, it's, I've always been passionate about whatever I do, whatever I decide to, to put my mm. mind to. And I've always been a hard worker and I've always wanted to succeed. I've always been driven by success and um and hard work. So yeah, that is that's basically the background and this is where we are today. It's a lot. It is. I I yeah. am interested to know because you seem to be really this diverse person with diverse experience and you know engaging in diverse places, music, law and um and 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 fashion um where do you get the time as a young person uh, i mean i think now it's even more crazy because above and beyond you are a mother you are a wife um and i was listening again to one of your of your videos and you were saying you cook every day you find time to make sure that you cook every where do you find time i mean because in, in, in my interactions with a lot of young people, you'd ask them, why are you not doing this? And they just say, I don't have time. And you look at what they're doing and really, yeah. I think it all comes down to time management. It's very, very important mm. to manage it properly because I feel like we all, have, we all have 24 hours in a day, but it's how you use those 24 hours. Oh, and powerful. So for example, I wake up in the morning and Okay, I have so many things going, for example. Yes, I'm a mom, I'm a wife. My husband expects me to, to not expect, but my, I, I cook for my husband. And um, yeah. I like it that way. He likes it that way too. So I make sure that he's fed and I make good meals for him. Something that he's yeah. going to be enjoying. Just, I have to cook, it's like I, I'll just cook whatever. You know, I'm a mother. I have to make sure that my, my, my son is well taken care of. 
that he's fed, mm. he's done to make sure that I sit down and bond with him because he also needs my time. Um, I need to make sure that he's bathed and to make sure that he's clean and that he's he's happy and you know all that. Then I have my businesses. I have to run my business. So it's meeting up with clients, consulting with them, designing the clothing for the clothing for the ready to wear line of because the, the VD by Vanito is a is an umbrella um, uh, um, uh, brand. Basically, we do I think it's about four. There's four branches to it. Like there's the ready to wear clothing line. Mm. Then we've got where I make the make customized clothes for our customers. Um, and then mm. I also have accessories and accessories. So um, it's a lot. It really is because each of, each each one of those branches is quite demanding because it's meeting up with clients, um, fulfilling fulfilling whatever their orders are, and then sitting down to actually design something for the ready to wear. Mm. Um, collection to make sure that it's something new, something fun, something exciting, something mm. that's for people because you also want people to buy. Um, and then making sure that you get you've got the latest um, accessories that people are excited about. It's a lot, it's a lot. It's really sitting down to make sure that happens. And then also going to now to my law life, because I'm also a practicing lawyer. Yeah. And then yeah. Um, cases that I'm running around with that I'm having I've got clients to meet at the at the firm. I've got pleadings to draft. I've got courts to attend. It's a lot. It really is a lot. Yeah. But it comes down to time management because you can't sit there. I, I don't know who are, the, who are the people that are the most greatest people in the world. People like I don't know Michael Jackson or Beyonce. We all have twenty four hours in the day. But it's how yeah. you use those twenty four hours and what time you wake up. Bill Gates. Everyone. All these successful people. They all have twenty four hours in the day, but they all manage mm. their um, appropriately and they make sure and thoroughly. And I think mm. it all comes down to time management. Um, if you're at the beginning, maybe starting with a timetable, for example, yeah. and um, you know waking up early and then you exercise. Because I also take time to to exercise, to take care of my body, um, to dress up, you know, to do my yeah. makeup all the time. So maybe having a little timetable where you allocate. Maybe a more you just sit down, you set up everything that you want to be doing um, on a daily basis and make sure that you follow that timetable. It really, really, really helps. Because my life, I can tell you, is very hectic. I go by the time I go to bed, I am physically drained. And yeah. it's hectic. It's gotta be done because I'm very passionate about everything that I do. So yeah. So I guess this is what I get from you, and this is a question to, to the audience. What are you doing with your 24 hours? Because as we can see, Varizo's 24 hours is packed. Packed. What are you spending your 24 hours? Where you are currently positioned in life is a result of how you spend your time. But as we swiftly move forward, um, Varizo, Glad is coming in, management is key. Kundai Demako Mukwamiri um, coming in, time management, he puts hands that are clapping. So they are all agreeing with you. Please do engage with us. If you have questions for Rara Izo, send them through. She's here to answer, hopefully, all questions, hopefully. Uh, but uh, and if you have comments, please do send them through. We do want to see uh, those comments coming through. But Izo, I'm interested to know, because if you have a hectic life and schedule like that, I think one aspects of life that needs to be well uh, taken care of is, is, is support, a support structure. And I'm interested to know that um, if, if you were to choose one or two people that have really played an instrumental role uh, of support and encouraging you throughout your career, who would those people be? I think, you know, it's three people that I can say is uh, very instrumental. My mother, my yeah. father, and my husband, um, yeah. they were my biggest cheerleaders. They've always had my back. And mm. my dad is my number one fan when it comes to music. And he he loves my music. It could be, actually, both my parents. My mom, it could be the crappiest song, and it sounds terrible. <laughs> saying this is the best song I've ever heard. She watches every single video I post on YouTube. It could be nothing related to anything in her life, but she will sit there and watch. She supports my my business. She will buy dresses even if she doesn't want to wear any of the dresses in my life. She will buy. She's very, very supportive. And um, she's really made, she, both of them, both my parents, they've really 
they give me this confidence and they've really allowed me to to soar because they've made it okay. They they told me that it's okay to be me and it's okay to be um to shine in whatever it is that I decided to to do. And I think this that's that's something that's very important when you have um support from your from your parents because a lot of black people, a lot of black parents are very um restricted in how they think. They have they have this tunnel they've got this yeah. tunnel thinking pretty yeah. you know, do something it has to be done in a certain way. They're not flexible yeah. about it. They don't support our young children because the world that we live in, there's so many changes and um what used to happen fifty years ago in terms of career choices is very, very different. You find children coming to say, Okay, I I I don't want to be an engineer or a lawyer or a doctor. I want to be a creative and I want mm. to be a site designer. Or I want to be a an artist that paints. You know, in, it's it's unfortunate because a, a lot of black parents don't see that as careers that people should take, as career paths that people that their children should be taking. And mm. um, it's very important that parent parents support their children in whatever they want to do. And I've been very fortunate to to receive that support from my parents. They've been mm. very very, supportive. and I can tell you, it makes a very big difference when I wake up in the morning knowing that I've got everyone everyone has my back it gives me that extra confidence which in turn makes my work more more successful in the end yeah. so those are my my husband my husband is, is is amazing he he supports everything that i do he has such a positive way of thinking um, i could bring home like i could go to work and maybe not not have such a great day and bring home maybe let's say 20 dollars for example he will be like you know what this is amazing. This is amazing. You know, but you know, the whole thing is just like you're going to pick it up, you know. Yeah. And he's very, very supportive, and um, he's always he's he's the brain behind a lot of my, especially VD. Actually, he's the brain behind that because he's got he's very wise. He's a very wise person, and he's also a businessman. He's gone through a lot um in this business interview as a businessman. And there's a lot of lessons that he's learned, and he's he's my mentor. He teaches me a lot. He taught me a lot about. I don't even know how to use to put my 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 VD uh, monies on Excel because you know this this you create an Excel yeah. document. Yeah. Yeah. How you're spending your money, the reconciliations, and everything. I didn't even know. This is just an example. I didn't even know that. Okay. When he came across, he put together everything for me. Now I know exactly what's going on in my company. I know what monies are coming in, what monies are going out, what monies are profit, what monies, well, what losses, if I'm making any losses, what my costs are, all these things that I, I didn't even know when I started off this business. You know, there's so many things that I learned from him business wise. And um, I get a lot of support from him. And he's always been my pillar. And, you know, so um, those are the three people my parents and my husband. I think um, another important you know, point that you're making there, and it resonates with what was said uh, last week, especially with regard to you know parents supporting uh, you know their kids irrespective of what route they want to take. Because I, I I know for a fact that many, especially African parents, they try and force you into a corner, and and it's either their way or you know no way. And and it's just not working, you know, in this day and age because there are different forms of uh, and streams of income that one can explore. And if if your child is passionate, I think you can achieve more with with passion. And another thing that is coming through from what you're saying is to say husbands or spouses, you should be supportive um, of of your spouse. And I think it's an important theme, um, especially in South Africa. We are having a lot of, you know. Uh, cases of domestic uh, violence and and things like that and and you come and say you know you know men should be supportive and you are you know one lucky woman to be having a, a man that is really supportive and that's what all husbands um, and 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 also on the other end you know wives should be to each other uh, supportive. Um, there's a there's a question that I quickly want to ask you, and I, I think it's interesting. So I kept it, you know, posted on the on the. I think it's interesting. The reason why I think it's interesting because at Rhodes University, you, uh, I mean, we used to know that Varaizo is 
um, this girl of flair, of glamour, how she dressed, she's always on top of her game. So Kundai then comes and says, Arizo, does your dress help you with boosting your confidence? What's, and then he says, what helps you keep on top of your game? You know, um, looking good is the starting point. If you feel good, mm. if you look good, you feel good. And if you feel good, you're confident. Um, it's, yeah. it's, I learned that at a very young stage. Um, and it shows. So if you dress up, you feel good, you put on your makeup, you're, you're feeling good, it will ooze out. The whole world will show. We will, we will, we'll be able to, to see that, you know, we'll be able to see how, how good you feel. And yeah. that translates into confidence. And how do I stay yeah. on top of my I, I enjoy dressing up, number one. And um, mm. I think that as a woman, it's very important to to make sure that you take care of yourself. You make yourself feel good for yourself, not for anybody else. And the moment you realize that it's about you and it's about you, you're beautifying yourself for yourself, you really yeah. go for it. So that's, and that, I don't know if that answers the questions, but that's how I stay on top of my game. <laughs> yeah. You, you've heard it from her, you look good, you feel good. If you feel good, you're most likely to be, um, you're most likely to be confident. I just want to swiftly move forward. And, and, and I see time is, is, is like, you know, running away from us. But, but I want to move into your music career. So you started, you know, at a young age. Um, I'm, I'm interested in knowing when did you realize that you can sing? And you're an amazing singer uh, and artist, by the way. Uh, that's a compliment. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, so I'm was, interested. Yeah. I was when I was I think it was around 2000 2001 when this movie by Mariah Carey came out. It was called Glitter. So I watched. It was very. I think it was the first time that I was introduced to the idea of showbiz and mm. watching the watching Mariah Carey um, be this showgirl and she was she was she had this powerful, amazing voice mm. that. She, and she was making hits and she was on stage, she was performing and people loved her and she was confident. I was like, wow, that, that's amazing. You know, that's, now I know what I should do with my, my talent because I knew I could sing. I, I just didn't know. I just thought it was, oh, I can sing. I can, just didn't know what to do afterwards, you know. So I realized that I could sing and I was like, now it's time to, 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 to make something out of it, to make, make a career out of it. And that's how I ended up venturing into the music industry. Yeah. And also, I remember once upon a time when I was young, I think it was with my sister. Um, yeah. We used to sing uh, Anamai Charamba. And they would go outside and they would be like, they would be like shooting a video. We'd be thinking, we would sit there and like, act like we're shooting a video. And they would go to my parents and be like, you know, we want to be singers. Please take us to ZBC so that we can show them that they can, <laughs> then they can take a video of us and then they can start playing it on ZBC. We thought it was just that easy because you just go to ZBC and you tell them, ZBC, come to us. We want to sing. And just come. But it was just it was interesting. But yeah, it was just, I was always musical right from an early stage. And yeah, eventually I decided to make it to, to, to venture into the music industry. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to take us back a little bit on the subject of support. Uh, Gladys says, good support systems, family, parents, and uh, spouses, 100%. Uh, Lutando Mpofu said, support is what keeps us going. I have two jobs, and I receive 100% support from my manager, colleagues, friends, and family. Uh, so they are all in agreement. And when it comes to dressing, I think this one is an interesting one. Rodney Makaruta, he says, dress how you want to be addressed. <laughs> Yeah, that's very, very true. Because if you don't dress how you want to be addressed, people are dressing the way that you don't want to be addressed because of the way you dress. Oh, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm keen. So you, 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 you then figured out that you know in the days around 2001, and I'm interested in knowing the journey when you decided now that you really wanted to go professional and you were still at a really young age. What are some of the things that you had to quickly learn in order for you to be, you know, successful, obviously, in, in, in the music industry? 
So I was 16 when I actually went and started actually recording professionally. And um, all this time, I was just sitting at home and make noise for my parents <laughs> and my siblings. They just thank God for their patience. Thank you guys. I appreciate it because it's a lot of noise. And then eventually, yeah. when I was 16, you know, maybe I should make this something that I should I should make this I should, a pro, not a profession but professionally. And then I had a friend. Her name was Tilo. She had a friend who was a producer. Because at that point, I didn't know how exactly to break into the industry because I didn't know anybody who made music. Um, so yep. lucky I had my friend, and she, I think, her brother or something like that was a producer. And so she she introduced me to him, and then I went there and I started recording. His name was Zanda. I think he's still he is still there. Anon Zanda. He calls himself Anon Zanda. And um, he he I started recording with him. He's more of a hip hop producer. So it was I, I'm an R and B artist. So it was a bit of a clash, but we managed to make some stuff. It was a good experience for me. It was good exposure as well to learn a lot about the music industry from there. And then from then on, I moved on to Blog 101 under Dexter and TG. That's where I recorded most of my songs, including Rubarangu, Muduze with Sunny Makalima. Um, a lot of my songs I recorded there, Dapuana. Um, that's where I did most of my songs. They were amazing. They understood the direction I wanted to go and um, it worked out well for me. And then I moved on from there. I was just, working with different producers from anywhere really um to just you know come up with a well with with songs i worked with russo from russo that's where we did the doing time my name with Linda Mafumo. and then i worked with who was it there's a lot a lot of people that i worked with so um it was quite a journey it was learning a lot it was just it was it was it was a roller coaster because i met a lot of people i learned a lot um and i grew as an artist and yeah. enough to be taught a lot of lessons by those people so so yeah so so i guess i think i think one thing that you really highlight is that the people that you met were playing a fundamental role because obviously you were learning from them because they had more experience I guess it's a lesson to say when, when you want to break into an industry, it can be a business, it can be a career, it can be anything. When you want to break into something that you're not really familiar with, find people that are in, in that particular field that can help you, mentor you, um, hold your hand through, you know, um, through processes so that you can, you know. And I think that's a very important point that, that you're making there. Um, but I, at the age of 16, I'm really interested in knowing... Um, did you already think of yourself as a as a brand by then? And and if so, what kind of brand were you trying to build? No, I wasn't thinking about myself as a brand. I was more interested in singing and just making music. It was more exciting to hear yourself on the radio or like on a track. You know, oh, that's me, that's me. So I wasn't really much about branding myself, and it, it shows a lot in my music because I had like of genres that I was I was attempting to do. And as much as I was an R&B artist, I was also attempting to do, I was doing dance hall, I was doing a lot. I didn't really keep yeah. in line with a certain brand or a certain um, direction. So it was just, for me, it was mainly uh, just singing, just enjoying singing, making music. It was just free flowing. So I didn't really mm. have a brand. Like, I think I only started trying to brand myself as I, um, grew older and I was maybe in my early 20s and then I had mm. a manager and he was now talking about branding and the importance of branding and that's when I started um, you know um, moving towards branding myself but in the early stages it was just let's make music and let's listen to ourselves and just yeah. <laughs> okay great come on people um we're going to stop if you're not engaging with us we're going to stop we, we are really here for you guys we're here to answer all questions any questions and we want to see your comments please keep them coming um we can also see your hearts and likes so on facebook you can actually press the heart button and the like button many times that just encourages us and and you know it it, it helps us keep uh, uh uh know that there are people that are watching us on the other side of the screen um but I you you've worked with uh, you know uh, I I believe that you've worked with a lot of successful you know um, uh, males in the industry, and I just want to ask this question, and I think it's an important one. 
and it relates to how did you find it in the industry being young number one but also number two being female how did the industry treat you the industry is very brutal very mm. brutal already being a female is, is difficult in any industry it's something that yep. we still have to come in, in, our, in our society but in the music industry you hear stories about people sleeping with producers because they want to trade yep. because they want to pay or even if they can afford to pay they're still being forced to sleep with producers because well producers take advantage of little girls and it's a reality yep. happening just recently i was watching something online and there was a lady a local musician who was talk, telling the story about how she was being forced to sleep with somebody um for a track it's unfortunate yep. but it's a reality lucky for me i was always grounded you know and i always knew yeah. what i wanted and i always knew know you how to say no you know and i was also fortunate to be working with people who have my best interest at heart so no one was trying to take um to take advantage of any, any of, of me um yeah. i was i was out of people who wanted to see me win so that was my 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 that's how i was lucky but that was my advantage but the reality is that the reality is people are out there being forced to sleep with producers people are, are being abused young children are being abused because they just they're so naive and what they all they want is to just succeed and they believe that okay if you sleep with this person you're going to succeed and it's, mm. it's not a lot of women who have they their, 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 their music careers went nowhere even after mm. so it's just I was lucky enough to be grounded and um, to knew exactly what direction I wanted to go. So it's it's being grounded. It's it's knowing exactly where you want to go. It's aligning yourself with people that also are not do not have questionable questionable characters. People that want to see you succeed, um, because it's not everyone that is in the industry, whatever industry it is, that wants to see you succeed. Um, no, no. Some are looking to see what they can gain from you. Sure. Sure. Mm. Yeah. Praise. Thank you very much. Watching from Gramstown. Thank you. James, my city was always uh, always sur surround yourself with people who have your best interest at heart. So he's just reiterating that. Um, having mentioned these challenges, I'm I'm keen to know has is is the industry moving in a positive direction or not? And and I'm really interested in knowing what what should be done with the music industry. And I think this is prevalent it's not only in the Zimbabwean music industry; it's in the South African music industry. It's it's not only in the music industry, people are sleeping with people just to get jobs. So managers are taking advantage of people, um, uh, people with businesses, people with capital. Um, how do you think that this problem can be, you know, can be solved? What, what, yeah, and especially, I mean, you can speak from a musical, you know, industry perspective to say, is there any progress? Is, does it seem like we're head, heading towards a positive direction? And if not, what should we be doing? I think we're very, very far from from overcoming that that issue. Unfortunately, um, as long as there's somebody who's who's not going to be who doesn't know who, who can't pay for it, I'm talking from the music perspective, who can't pay for studio time, who can't pay for a track, but they want a dream to come true. Naive, being naive is a reality, and being desperate is a reality. Mm. And young women out there are desperate. Young women out yeah. there. Are so it's it's a long way until we get to to, to actually mm. overcome. I think it's also we have to as as parents and um okay I'm saying as as parents because I'm a parent now. It's funny how time yeah. things to say when you just wake up and yeah. your parents. Yeah. <laughs> mm. um, but parents have to be very careful about how they bring up their children because um they have to 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 teach them to say no. They need to teach them to understand the team. You have to work for what you for what you want, and there's no easy way out. There's no easy way mm. to become people. You have to work, work, work. And if you don't have, you don't have, okay? Work, find a way to, to make it happen in, in, a, mm. in, in an appropriate way without having to sleep with anybody or sell your body or anything like that. Mm. There's no such thing as instant gratification or instant success. Everybody yeah. has to, you have to set up a foundation. You have to, oh. to, to, to make sure that you are grounding yourself first before you actually get to the top. And it's a, it's a process. It takes time. Yeah. It takes It's a lot. 
But unfortunately, we also had people in, in the limelight, people who are influential, who are who make it okay to have that instant gratification and that instant mm. success. But the only reason why they have that instant success is because of the shady things that they do in the back that you will never find out about. You know? Mm. And when they do these shady things, the, because the thing is that we're living in a world of social media where our role yeah. model are posting pictures, are posting their lives, and they will yeah. never show you the dark sides. Never mm. show you. They do all the great things. They tell you, oh, I've just bought this, this, this Bentley. And you think, oh, you think it's just the thing that just happens overnight, but it's not. Yeah. You don't know what they've done for them to get that Bentley. And do yeah. not find somebody that you don't know. And do not want to be that person. Don't try and be a, to, to follow someone's footsteps without actually looking at yourself and having self reflection. Yeah. Because you just sit down and realize where you stand, follow your path. And understand where your path is going and follow the, the path the correct way because shortcuts have consequences and don't follow people's lives and think that their lives are all roses they will only show you roses they will never show you yeah. the thorns so yeah. it's very important that you stay grounded and follow your own path and work hard for what you want success doesn't yeah. happen and and I guess that's the that's the you know the downside of social media, where people really just show the successful side and and not the struggles. And it's interesting that as we go into the next question, I'm going to be asking you of some of the lows. And this is in relation to your to, to law school. I'm really trying to to get so that we can get through the se sessions sections that we want to get through. So the your law school were you always passionate about law and you know, I, I'm interested in knowing your journey in law school, and I, I personally have heard you speak about your journey in law school, and and just highlight some of the highs and lows in law school, and and how you it, it, it made you feel, and how you navigated that space. Yeah. So, was I always passionate about the law? Not really. Quite honestly, I'll be honest with you. But like I said earlier on, I've always been passionate about music from a young age and modeling and all that stuff. I've always been a creative. But then obviously because I come from like a black household and my black parents um, always, I, I understand where they were coming from. They said that, you know, continue with your music, continue with everything else that you want to do, continue with the fashion, but I always have something that's going to be, that you're going to be able to fall back on in case all of that doesn't work out. So they gave mm. me two options after looking at my old level results. They gave me two options. I could either be a doctor and I could, I could be a lawyer. I'm definitely not yeah. a doctor because I'm not very good with sick people. So I, I went to it. So it wasn't really a fashion thing, but it was a necessity thing. Just do something that's, mm. that you're going to be pull back on. Um, I don't regret it at all. I learned a lot. Mm. And um, I'm, I'm, I'm very grateful that I actually went and, and got my law degree. Um, even if I was told to rewind my life and start it again, mm. I was too to law school. Um, in terms of going to law school now, the issue was I had a very interesting um, journey at law school. I failed completely my first year. It was it was the, a complete nightmare for me. That was probably the lowest of the lows for me. Um, it was I had to repeat. I remember I was in first year with Freddie, and he was amazing. The local <laughs> yeah, it was big story. I don't be even in the second in the second year. And thank you, just, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't make it, and it's okay. I, I took that as a lesson, lesson learned, and um, I'm, I'm grateful that that happened to me because um, from then on, it was only upwards. Um, I didn't look mm. back. I was hungry to, to succeed. I was hungry to be at the top of my class. I was hungry to, to, to get that degree and, um, yeah. and, and, and beat all the odds. So, um, yeah, eventually I managed to graduate, and it was I was graduating at the top of my class. I was... Mm. I was recognized for being academically, what's the word? Clever. I'm trying to say clever. I was, I was on yeah. the dean. I was, I was in the golden key. All these things happened. Mm. I, I failed. And it was, I was happy that it happened that way because if, if I hadn't failed my first year, I don't think I would have been able to go as far as I did mm. and uh, I perform as well as I did in law school. So, yeah. And then eventually I came back to Zimbabwe and... Here I am, 
practicing as a lawyer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I think I'm, I'm, I'm really, there, there's something that you're saying there. With, without failure, there is no lessons. And, you know, many successful people, I, I believe that they will tell you of a gazillion of stories of failure. And we we learn from failure. Failure makes us, you know, better people. And I guess I guess that's what you were saying. And I, I, I'm just interested to just get a little bit more out of you. I want to know how it changed you, you know, um, from a practical level, emotional level, and you know, whatever way that it changed you. I, I'm interested to know how 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 did it change you? I think it just helped with um, my general outlook. Of life because um, that experience at Rose was and, and, and in law school was it, it really helped me mature, it helped me grow, it taught me a lot of lessons about life. It taught, taught me, like what you just said right now, taught me that failure is a very important step of success. If you don't fail, yeah. you know, it's important to make mistakes and so that you can always rectify them and know exactly how to deal with them if the next time they come around. So, just generally, yeah. but the that the outlook that I have of life has changed and um, I think I'm a better person um, than I was um, before I went through all the experiences I went through at, at law school. Yeah. yeah. Um, thank you for engaging with us. I am seeing your comments. Advocate Owen Magolcha, thank you very much. Hunger for success is what he says. Uh, Tanaka Paruta has a question. Uh, he says, Varaizo, let me just put that there. Oh, then it closes our thing, so I'm just going to remove it there so that, but I'll read it out. It says that, Varaizu, you strike me as a confident and, uh, sorry, as a very courageous and focused and confident woman. My question is to you, number one, which areas of law have you specialized in or are you passionate about and why? Okay, so at law school, obviously, I studied everything and I studied everything because you know, you do, you basically do everything. But then now in practice, um, I work at a law firm where we mainly do civil procedures, civil litigation. So um, we do things like debt collection, we do things like divorces and maintenance, and maintenance issues, um, contracts, corporate law, all that stuff. What I'm, what I'm passionate about though, guys, let's not judge, we're not judging, but I like divorces. <clears throat> It's, they're not nice. It's not nice. It was, but I just have. I just. I, I just. I just like to read the facts. Okay. <laughs> and if I, I'm sorry. Don't judge me. But I feel like I, I. 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 I relate more to people and their problems, and I always like to find solutions for them. So things like divorces and things like maintenance um, um, mm. issues. I like to help people and find solutions to their issues. So I'm very very passionate mm. about that. Definitely not passionate about criminal um, uh, cases and criminal matters because for me, like boring things, you know, all these sad things that are happening in the world is just too much sadness, and I don't want to be dealing with sadness. I like to find um, to find to, to to make something wrong, um, to find positivity and, and solve a solution, solve an issue, mm. solve a problem, find a solution to a problem um, for things like maintenance and divorces. So yeah. yes. Sorry, let's not judge, but that's 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 that's, 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 that's <laughs> We are not judging, no judgment passed, right? Um, let's see the hearts and likes coming, people. We we are interested in seeing those. Right, so I just want to quickly and swiftly move forward and, and get into business. And it's interesting that one of the questions that was raised is um, so you have a clothing line and uh, you know it goes by the name uh VD by Varizo, right? Um, and here the question is to say, kind, kind, kindly provide uh, me with at least three most important principles that have made your business successful. So, so what, it, it, what is it that, you know, that sets your business apart? Um, okay, I think I'll, I'll just talk in relation to clothing, to clothing businesses. Number one, quality. Yeah. The quality of the product. Quality will always guarantee you success because people want mm. good things. People want quality. Um, so I always make sure that anything that I make yeah. is because, I don't know, maybe because I'm just a perfectionist, but it's very, very important that people get quality for me. Number two, client satisfaction. It's important to please 
your clients. Number one, they'll come back. Number two, they will spread the word. Okay. If mm. they're happy, there's a chance that they will tell the next person. The next person who comes, get a good experience, they will go back and tell the next person. So definitely mm. client satisfaction is a very, very important thing. I I value client satisfaction to the point that if my client is not satisfied with something that I've made for them, I'm happy to to run it a loss to make sure that they're happy. Because mm. it's important that they are satisfied. And number mm. three, I always like to make the shopping experience at my store um, a a um, a luxurious, exciting um, experience. So I like to mm. personalize um, um, my the, the items that my clients buy. So for example, if you buy a dress, I'll put your name on the dress. You know, I'll uh. just make it exciting, it's different, and I'll also customize it to fit your body perfectly. So the sizing at BB is not just general size. You walk into a shop and it's a general size. We will yeah. make it to your body type and make sure that it fits you perfectly like a glove. So those mm. are the three. quality, client satisfaction, and just making sure that you have a luxurious and unique shopping experience. So that mm. has really helped. Those are the, the three things that we really, really, really have seen that have really helped my business to grow and um, attract yeah. people. Yeah. I, I just want to come in with a question there. And uh, it's I know that for because obviously I'm your friend, so I would know some of these things. I know that you started the business when you were in university and you started off by just selling sunglasses. But I'm interested in how important is, is timing when it comes to you know business because you started then and obviously it's a process, but how, how important is timing and, and what is perfect timing? You know, the thing is that um, you have to be aware of um okay like let me give you an example of how i started it's the reason why i started off the sunglasses is because i was testing the waters i wasn't sure how mm. people were going to respond and i wasn't trying to over invest in something that might backfire or something that i mm. might not enjoy doing so i started off the sunglasses to just see how people will respond i also looked at the environment that i was in i was at a university and um, the resources that I had were limited, especially because I was living in mm. Gramstown. So I couldn't start with um, what I'm doing now, for example, yeah. custom making, because I was limited in terms of fabric. I was not going to be able to find all the fabric in a little small town like Gramstown. Number two, my audience. Who was my audience? My audience was students. Mm. Are they really trying to be buying custom made clothes every day of their lives? Not really. But do they want mm. to buy something? So then I went with sunglasses and it worked with the sunglasses. As I was working with the sunglasses, I was building, building capital to now move on to the next, um, uh, the next stage of my business, of my clothing yeah. brand, was now clothing. Yeah. With the clothing, I didn't just start with just custom making clothes. I started doing the, the usual buying and selling. So I would buy clothes at um, a wholesale mm -hmm. price, put a profit, and then sell them. Right. Put a markup, sorry, put a markup and then sell them. And then um, it, I realized that it was great, it was working out well, but it was a bit limiting and it was restricted because I didn't really, I wasn't really creative, as creative as I wanted to be. So then I moved on to the next part, which was now, the next stage, which was now actually making clothes for people. And I found that I've been really enjoying it. It's really fulfilling. And um, I'm now in a space where I can access all the fabric that I want to access. I've got all the resources. And mm. um, I've got all the clientele. Because now I'm back in Zimbabwe. I'm in Harare, the capital. And there's so many people who are doing weddings. People are doing parties. There's people who are mm. working class and afford. I'm no longer doing, dealing with students. So there's a lot that you need to consider as you're growing your business. You need to look at your environment, where you are, where your audience and your potential client, clients are going to come from. And just mm. look also how much money you have, your capital. And um, maybe start small so that you can start building on your capital for you to eventually yeah. grow. So that's how um, I work with my time. I don't know if that answers the question, but yeah. It it, it, it absolutely uh, does. Um, I'm just reading some comments here. Quality um, from Trifin Rubimbo Magocha and uh, Tanaka, client satisfaction, quality. Quality guarantees success, number two. Client satisfaction, number three. 
um, exciting, luxurious, unique ex uh, experience uh, for the customer. And I have a question here, and I'm going to uh, marry it with, with, with mine. Um, uh, what kind of occasions do you dress at Fiji? And, you know, if you want to share with us some of the people that you've dressed, that's, that's up to you. But also there's a question from Patience. Um, she says, where do we find your shop? Okay, so at the moment, my shop is an online store. So you can find it at, at www.vdbyvalaito.com um, or you can find us on Instagram, vdbyvalaito, also on Facebook, vdbyvalaito. Um, I'm we basically now moving on to your question. Uh, well, yeah. before I move on to your question, we are still building the physical store. So we'll be able to have a physical store where you can come in and pop in and shop. But um, shopping online and shopping, texting us and um, interacting with us on Instagram or Facebook or any of our platforms, you'll be able to be assisted um, in as much as you want to be assisted. And you'll also be able to, um, be able to, be, to see our catalog and see what we have done and what we are still making and what's in the pipelines and also the different kinds mm. of Everything is there on our page, and um, I, I think you get a lot, you get a lot of information from there. But um, I've also there's also my contact details there. Um, you will be able to speak to myself or any of my assistants, and we will be able to to assist you in any way. Um, yeah. Moving on to your question, what type of occasions, what type of people do I address? I think yeah. um, we we do um, this. We have a ready to wear collection. Um, yeah, collection. Basically, the ready to wear collection is just a everyday woman who wants to just shop for I don't know work for work clothes clothes for church. Yeah. Before I start, before I, I tell you the, the, the different um, people we dress, I also want to just highlight that the brand is for the sophisticated, um, classy woman who is powerful and who wants to to be a showstopper, but in a positive way. So she's not mm. showstopping to her skin, but she's still stopping because she looks too classy. Like, think of Michelle Obama, think of, yeah. you know, first lady of a country. Um, so that's the type of people that I like to dress. People who are classy, people who are working class, people who are, mm. uh, who are sophisticated and elegant. Um, so yeah. we have a collection um, which I is constant throughout the year. We just go through it the season. So I design them personally and then I make them. Um, and then I post them on the page and people can buy. It's work clothes, it's church clothes, it's, it's event wear, it's all that. And then moving on, we've got the bridal, um, VD bridal. Bridal is white weddings, white civil weddings, and the Rodas. Um, I think you will see on our page that there's more Rodas happening there. So we design um, brides, uh, dresses for our brides, and we also make dresses for our bridesmaids. Um, so Rora, for those in South Africa, that's Lobola, uh, yeah. Traditional weddings, traditional weddings and the white weddings. We also have white weddings. And then we also have the third branch, which is the event wear. So event wear is basically your maternity shoots, like recently I just did a maternity shoot for one of, um, one of our clients. Um, wedding attires, um, if you want to be a wedding guest of, and you want to look absolutely stunning, you can also come to our, our store. We make everything custom um, and everything is made by order so that we make sure that it suits you perfectly because, um, like I said earlier on, our the shopping experience at Beauty by Rise is basically um, a unique experience because we make everything yeah. according to your body type. We don't generalize. We customize according to you. So that's basically how um, our, that's basically who I dress, if that makes sense, and the three yeah. different um, dresses we have. Yeah. Um, I'm going to ask you an, a question. I'm just going back uh, to a question that is asked, and as we are just trying to wrap up, I think this is an interest way to to wrap up. Um, uh, the question is this: so it's 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 it says growing up as a, a privileged uh, young lady, um, and privilege can be the support that you are receiving from parents to just coming from a comfortable place um, and, 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 and background, well, we are assuming, and you can clarify that as you speak, what pushed you to be a hard, working, uh, a hard worker and a high achiever? That, that is the question. All right. So um, 
I, I would say that I came from a, a slightly privileged um, family. Um, I came from a stable family in terms of emotionally, I was emotionally stable. My parents were mm. together. Um, I came from a loving household. Um, they were very supportive. Um, mm. I never say when I, when I asked for something and they never gave me, I always got what I wanted. But um, I've always been a person who always believed in, in, in my own independence. I've always wanted to have mm. um, a mark of my own to be Valenzo, the Valenzo. Yeah. Not Valenzo, the lady, or Valenzo, the wife of. I want to be Valenzo. Mm. So I've, I've always been driven by, um, by, my, by, by creating a name for myself and creating my own money. And as much as I'm married, um, I would also like to, you know, have my own money. Yes, we are putting our money together, but you know, it's, mm. I should just sit at home and do nothing. It's just, I've been driven by my own hunger for yeah. my own building success. So yeah. that's what, what has, has, has driven me. Yeah. 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 And um, I, I'm just interested, um, and as, again, I say, as, we, uh, as we're going towards the end, you, you were in Zimbabwe at one point, then you were in South Africa. What role has exposure played, uh, you know, what role has exposure played in the success that you have had thus far? You know, it's, it's South Africa and Zimbabwe are two different countries and um, there's a lot that happens in South Africa that does happen in Zimbabwe in terms of exposure. Like people talking about my business in, uh, in fashion, there's a lot of, um, of, 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 of I don't know how to put it, but then it's, it's, it's a whole movement in South Africa of fashion. Fashion is taken seriously, and mm. people are creative, and people are not afraid to be creative. And mm. there's so many designers that do so much that that you that think out of the box that do a lot. Whereas in Zimbabwe, people are just you know people are mm. so shy, and conservative. They're still trying to test the waters and see if it works or not, and they want to keep mm. like bubble, you know. So being exposed to the South African industry, for example, has been very helpful in that it has taught me to think out of the box, to be more, um, to be more in touch with my creativity, and to not be afraid to to try out and to try and make mistakes and to try again, because mm. um, that's, that's 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 there's a culture of of um, of there's a lot of freedom and a lot of flexibility in South Africa, something that's a bit lacking in Zimbabwe. So that's definitely what um, what exposure has done. James, my series says, I love the growth stages from glasses to buying and selling and then to customizing. So the stages to success and, and that has been clearly received. Um, uh, Tanaka says, wow, well, well answered. I think it's in relation to the question of privilege. And she has the C tumor says, um, such a powerhouse. Um, Really, as we now round this up, right, so, um, and this is a question that we really ask everyone, and the background and context is to say what we're trying to do here is to create a community of people, um, of shared stories and, uh, you know, shared resilience, shared experience. And we know that we've got a lot of young people that have got dreams and aspirations, especially on this page. And as yourself, as a young person that had dreams and aspirations and are at a certain stage of life, I'm just keen to know what your thoughts are when it comes to how young people should be supported in order for them to reach their fullest potential. And, and, and if I can just add, you know, I would say, who should be this person that should be, you know, supporting these young people? I think that the, the main support system should come from, from, from family. Why yeah. I'm saying family? Because when you're born, you're born into a family, you become familiar with those people. And getting a head, getting, um, uh, hold on, there's a word I'm looking for. Um, what is the word? It's a word that, it's a very easy word, but getting, I'm just gonna use praise. Getting confirmation. Getting yeah. confirmation, but that's not the word, it's a word that I want to use, I can't find it, but it should probably pop up yeah. as I'm talking. I'm basically getting a confirmation from from the people that you care about. Yeah. Really have an impact. Um, mm. Because sitting there and you're waiting for 
for confirmation from from somebody that you don't even know. That that won't have the same impact as getting confirmation yeah. from your mother, confirmation from your father. So it's very very important that your family is is there supporting you because those are the people that you have. That's the word affirmation. Thank you, Chiesa. <laughs> Thank you. The very simple word. See, I told you. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Really has one. Thank you. You're getting affirmation from from your family, from people that you are familiar to, people that you know, people that you love, people that you trust. Those people, mm. if they're friends, you know that you are going to be able to to go far. Um, because we live in a world where um, the so I'm going to go back to social media. The social media. Yeah. Is all of these things, and people are so quick to hate. People are so quick to, to judge. People are so quick to, to keyboard warriors and sing all mm. the things that are very, very damaging. You know, so you mm. always want to have them of people that you know, people that you know have your best interest at heart, mm. and people that we really want to see you win. So I would say yeah. that as family and as parents, especially, to support their children because they don't know how mm. much happens to them. I would rather have my mom mm. tell me you're doing great, as opposed to someone next door telling because when someone next door comes and tells me, ah, oh, you're you're terrible, your clothing mm. like the music doesn't sound nice. I don't mm. care because I have enough support from the people that I care about and um yeah. what matters to me the most. And again, great yeah. that's the role models we need to have um I hope I, I think we need to get realistic role models um that will that 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 um that show us the way in life because um it's important that we also have people that we look up up to and that mm. are not that might not be family but there are people out there in society that have done wonders yep. in this world. and it's important that we also look at um that we, we, we follow realistic role models people that are actually doing things the the proper way as opposed to role models that are questionable. Wow. Um, you've heard it from Varaidzo, getting affirmation um, from the people that you care about. I, I think that's really powerful and I've seen it, uh, you know, a lot of times, you know, after we do a session just right here, um, it's it's before anyone else can call me and say that was an amazing you know session. Um, the first person would be my wife to say you know you did great, and it feels good to receive you know affirmation from people that are close to you. And I think it's an important point that you're making. Realistic role models. So instead of just following blindly, um, because there are a lot of people, as you said earlier on, that are really portraying one side and not really showing you how they're getting to where they're getting. Uh, and, and just having realistic, authentic um, role models and all those points resonate with people that have been on the platform previously. And so really, I think I'd like to really thank you. Do you, I, I would like to just give you this opportunity to tell people where they can find you and have a shot if there's any last words that you'd like to leave us with. Firstly, I want to say thank you so much for having me. I was very, very honored to be on this um, on this show. You're doing great. You're doing, this is a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful um, um, platform for people to learn. And um, mm. I, I'm watching your previous interviews, I learned a lot as well from thank people. You coming from different walks of life with different careers mm. and different um, different um, stories. So thank yeah. you so much. It's very honored to be here. That's number one. Number two, you can catch me on Instagram. You can catch me on Facebook. You can catch me anywhere. <laughs> I'm ready to. I'm very, very open person. I like talking to people. And if you want to talk more about business, about anything, you can drop me a DM. Mm. I'm ready to respond. It's Varai Zunyakunika. Anything you find it there for my for my business it's BD by Varaito. For my music it's just Varaito. Um so yeah, that's basically you can catch me and you can find me. Um I am like I said, I'm very willing to to talk to anybody to chat um, if you'd like to chat and also follow my YouTube channel. You can subscribe onto my YouTube channel. I talk a lot about um, my Basically, business and fashion, of course, makeup. I talk about. Mm. 
I always make it a point that people learn something from my videos. They just start to read yep. I like to teach people, I, I like people to spend, to watch a video and learn something um, and take something with them when they leave. So yeah, that's, that's it. Those are my final words. <laughs> Thank you so much. And if I can just add, she means it when she says that she's open to chatting. She is one lady that I've met in life that sometimes at first sight, you might think that, oh, yeah, but she's so down to earth, so humble. But a trailblazer, she is a jack of all trades. And you have seen it. I think people were calling you a powerhouse. That's exactly what she is. So reach out to her, follow her, see what she's doing support i think support 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 and that's what we want to be doing on this platform especially as young people it's high time that we sub start to support each other and be intentional about doing it because if we don't we're not guaranteed that anyone else will support us so let's support each other um uh, my learned colleagues, this was great. This is Chafi Musa, Lutando Pofu. I will definitely follow you. And Tanaka, that's very true. Thank you also to you guys that came and participated. Uh, you know, it would not be a show. It would not be uh, as exciting if it was just me and Varaido chatting. You being here asking the questions that is what makes this show as, uh, you know, important. Um, and I would like to say, if you've got people that you want us to have on the show, please feel free to write to us in our inbox. We will approach anyone, whether they come or not, that's up to the person, but we, we do not have boundaries. We will approach anyone to be here. So if you have people that you want to suggest, we are here and we will, um, we will, we will, we will pay attention to that. Uh, Maxo Makaruza, thank you very much, uh, you good kid. Thank you very much. I, I, I appreciate all your support. And we're just going to leave it here today. And thank you once again, Varaizo. It has been amazing. I think it's one hour, almost 20 minutes that we've been here and we've not seen how time flew. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you and good night to all of uh, you that are watching. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Until we meet again next week, same place, same time. Uh, have a great one.